I'm good. I'm good. I'm a little tired today. Oh, no, that's rain. okay. We'll go easy. No, no, it's just no, the, rain. Kidding. the rain. On, I, I guess I'm assuming he's sitting on this side. Uh, you can guess. No, no, I'm yeah. It's all about him. I'm just like the side piece here. That's me. I'm like, that's all about you, Dad. I'm just, I just came along for the ride, Dad. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm going to take you. I was like, uh, what am I supposed to talk about? He's like, just, just, just wait till I tell you. And I'm like, He's cool. like, I'll tell, I'll give you instructions. Like, we didn't talk at all today. Yeah. So like, I have no idea where we're, like, we didn't even go over it. I was like, Dad, I should we review what we're, and he's like, no, 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 it'll be fine. Yes. I joined very late in the game, so. Right. <laughs> well, he has plans for you. Right. I have plans for myself, too. I bet you do. It's called taking over the business. For the Marin Council of Chambers, I'm Stephanie Plant, and this is We Are One Marin. Welcome to our last drop of season one. Today, Kalina and I turned on the mics a little early so you can join us in the room where it happens. Let's get official so we can all hear how we sound. You get to put on those headsets and then we all look like we're officiating or commentating at a basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have been sitting at the table just chatting um, with Anil and Needy Deer. Uh, we're keeping it in the family today, father and daughter. And I love that. Owners of Jolly King Liquors in Mill Valley. I am a product of a family business myself. So I'm, I'm really interested in uh, the two of you and your collaboration and maybe wh where it started, Anil. 93. 1993 is when I bought Jolly King. It was already an existing business running for at least 20 plus years at that time. The reason I bought Jolly King because I immigrated to U.S. in 1987 and I used to be a banker in India. Mm. But banking career here wasn't that great at that time with my Indian background. So finding a good business and running it was something that aspired right in the very beginning. Well, I guess with a banking background, you had a business sense mm. built right in. Yes. So analyzing the business and uh, making sure that you're buying the right kind of business with profitability and the risk and everything, that was something uh, I guess I had built in. <laughs> and what brought you to the U.S.? My um, brother was here, so I guess I decided um, I should settle down in U.S. if I can. And did you leave uh, your parents behind? Uh, my father was not living at that time. He passed away, but my mom was, and it was very easy for her also to come and settle here because she had been a housewife all year, all her life, and my father was not alive, so she was dependent on the sons, and we were taking care of her. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. She still lives with me. She does. Oh, so this family business thing. <laughs> <laughs> so she's not... She's not um, Involved in the business, but but of course she lives at home. But mom yeah. is. My yeah. mom. You, no, mo as in your as in my mom, your wife. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you and your wife and now your daughter yeah, are correct. in business together. But then your mother lives in your house. So I guess what I meant was extended family. Extended family. You are. Correct. Um, you're you're an expert. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> is Jolly King a franchise? It is definitely not a franchise. When I acquired that business or bought it in 93, that was the name that the business already had. Hmm. And I kept the same name. The only reason being even the bus drivers knew where Jolly King was. <laughs> so it wasn't smart on my part to change a name that is already recognized. Sure. And do you have any idea what the origin of the name is? So I think from the people in Mill Valley, what I heard, there used to be a Jolly Market at the location at 393 where uh, our store is. Oh, Needy looks like this is new. She's learning at I did not the know history this. as we're talking I, I about I did it. not know yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> huh, a market, okay. So there was a market called Jolly Market at there, and inside the market was a liquor section known as King Liquors. Ah. Oh. And then at some point, Jolly Market went out of business and but the store still was there, and and the I think the owners decided to keep the name Jolly King, hmm. and and the name sounds very good too. Well, yeah, and it's it's a, and that's a nice link to the history nice of the location. And, and the history. Yeah, so did correct. you work there before you bought it? No, I did not. Hmm. Um, this was a basically, you buy the business, you pay for it, and then you run it. And you figure it out. <laughs> uh, figure it out in a. 
in a good way was that uh, we had an agreement that the sellers would help me for a couple of weeks. But they decided that after that, they, they only came for like three days and then I was on my own. And which was okay. It was challenging. But uh, I, I figured it all out. 30 years this year. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, you. You're probably, yeah, that's not even as long as you've been alive, right? Actually, no, I was. She I used was, to wear diapers. I was, I, <laughs> she I was only a few months old. I, think I was maybe less than a year old when they got Less than a year old. Because I'm 30 now. Ah. I was there, but I remember it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and you have one sibling, is that, is yes, that right? Yes, I have a sister. Oh. She was definitely there. She's older than you. And uh, th do you work in the store now? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. I've been working full time now for th four years, almost now. Mm -hmm. Was working at Wells Fargo before that. You know. Oh, this banking yeah, thing banking also thing runs yeah. in the family. <laughs> <laughs> in the family as well. <laughs> I had a bank teller job once mm -hmm. in my, well, not, well, I mean, for a long time. It was yeah. a great summer job in high school and college. How did that come to be? I'd love to have a little... Like, did you two just decide over dinner one night? or? Well, it was always a conversation that I was going to eventually take over. Mm. Um, I worked at Wells for about five years as a manager. And then I was kind of done with it. Mm -hmm. It's exhausting. So then dad was like, you know, I'm getting older. And we would love for you to come on board. And so then I joined right before COVID, mm. which was probably the worst time mm -hmm. <laughs> to join. Um, but yeah, I mean... I've learned a lot from him. I'm still learning a lot from him. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was, it's was it been fun, I would say. Did you have any experience, Anil, in the liquor business at all? Not at all. And <clears throat> when I came in 87, India typically did not have the kind of range, variety, and selection we have mm. in liquor, beer, etc. in India. So India was just, you only knew two things, whiskey or beer. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe one after the other. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so um, obviously it was not easy. I mean, uh, I did not bring in money with me from India. So me and my wife, we worked very hard, saved everything that we could so we can come up with a down payment for a business. So in my mind, it was like liquor could be a very stable business where the risk of not being successful would not be as much. So so the challenge was to find someone who is selling a business and make sure that uh, the profitability is there and uh, the other things are in place. Well, and you have to have a, liquor licenses are not exactly handed out readily, correct? They, they go with the location, if I'm not mistaken? Correct, location, and also you can sell it to the prospective buyer. Mm. So when you buy this kind of a business, the, the license comes with it. But of course, you'll have to go to ABC to get it transferred to your name. But the location remains the same, and the license holder can sell it to the next buyer. Easier to acquire a liquor license and the business than to bring it, try to get a new liquor license in a certain area. That is absolutely true. So generally, most of the counties in Bay Area probably have no room for new liquor licenses, so they, are, they barely become available. So typically, you want to buy a business and the license with it. So the ABC regulates how many licenses can be in a given population area. Is that how it works? That's correct. They control the new licenses and the transfers of licenses. So like back when taxis were pre-Uber <laughs> and a taxi driver owned a medallion. Correct. There's value in the license, right? Correct. I mean, obviously, there's value in your business, but then it's sort of a... That is absolutely true. I mean, the license itself is worth, I mean, in Marin County, it could easily be $100,000 just for the license wow. alone. Yeah. I mean, that's my mm -hmm. guess. You know, we always try to do research on our guests, and mm -hmm. um, maybe this is on purpose. You try to keep your business name out of the news, but there isn't much out there to, to find out about Jolly King Liquors, except some happy Yelp reviews and... <laughs> You know that you've been how long you've been in business, which is great. And I read that there's an extensive wine collection. One of the Yelp reviewers was sort of pleasantly surprised by that. And so I guess you've had to learn about that. Absolutely true. So I guess when I bought Jolly King in '93, uh, imagine a corner liquor store in San Francisco. That's how this was. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I think beer and liquor. And the cigarettes, believe it or not, were the big sellers. Oh, I bet. And as Mill Valley demographics were changing, the community needed more wine because the wine is pretty much culture in Marin. 
so all those things were in my mind and in order to to grow the business i think i found that the growth would be only in extensive wine selection and high end spirits mm. and not being knowledgeable about the wine so i decided i i, I need to educate myself mm. so i took a 3 month course with bruce cass i think he he writes column for wines mm. for a um ma- uk magazine mm. and he he was taking classes to to teach about wine to know about wine to taste the wine and all that stuff mm. so i still remember it used to be at least uh, two times a week i'll go to the city and it was a 3 to 4 hour session wow. and i i really wanted to learn hmm because one day i remember one of my salesmen we were talking about wine and said anil you can't even speak language of wine oh huh so i i realized that maybe there is something that i do not possess i mean some kind of a skill so i need to acquire it in order to be successful so running a business was not the prime motive because i mean i was always making enough for the family needs mm-hmm. but being successful doing something where i have some form of satisfaction mm mm-hmm. you know rather than a running a corner liquor store and just charging on the cash register and and just caring so it was always you know my endeavor to educate myself for the product line bring in the good products good wines and everything so customer can depend on our expertise hmm. to get a good product hmm. and so i'm sure you've built a a pretty good customer base over 30 years time i mean you must see parents adult children of those parents <laughs> true yeah. and now the kids are coming i bet i bet <laughs> i mean i remember when the cactus cafe was in oh uh, yes in that Michael. shopping center yes right yes he yeah i'm right next door to cactus there's pizza there now right yeah. extreme Correct. pizza it's pizza uh-huh. now mm-hmm. it's pizza what other now. changes have you do you feel like you've seen in mill valley i think the major is the demographic changes in terms of when i started it was more like you will still see and again i mean the people living in mill valley we term it as a blue collar uh, kind of a town and uh, you know right in the beginning as i was getting known to my customers you were just having interaction and i started finding that a lot of people were selling their houses and moving up north mm. and uh, and it seems like i've seen that change in the community where the the housing prices kept moving up and up and more uh, wealthier people were coming into town and it all happened if i remember correctly that sunset magazine put mill valley in the top 10 best towns in us huh. so that could have been easily 15 plus years ago yeah. and that saw a major change in the demographic in mill valley and all of a sudden you or you all see those expensive cars pulling in front of your store hmm. rather than the older Honda Civics and Hondas <laughs> and the pickup trucks. <laughs> uh, and, and you're pretty active in the Mill Valley Chamber also? I have been a uh, member. Uh, I I would accept that I'm not as active primarily because the store takes a lot of time from me. Sure. And we're open 7 days a week and uh, it just sometimes and most of the mixers are in the evening and, and you're open right and Until I'm open and I'm running my eight, business 8 o'clock at night. Yeah, that's that's a long day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nidhi, you talked about starting at, right around COVID. I mean, you did you begin to deliver? How did you guys accommodate? So, I started in 2019 and mm-hmm. then COVID was kind of right after. Mm-hmm. We closed, I think for 3 days, dad. Is that right? Yeah. About 3 days? And three we put four. up a 3-4 days we closed and put up that shield and we have a shield in the front where mm-hmm. the cash register is. And then I actually worked more because I didn't want them to get sick. Cuz I was like, I'm younger. If I get COVID, wow. I can recover faster. they can't because there was no there was no vaccines for such a you long time. You opened at, you you were only closed for 3 days. We were only closed for 3 days. We were literally open all throughout COVID. No. And wow. I I was I tried to get them not to come in as much mom and dad. I was like stay home. I don't want you guys to get sick. I can work. Mm. It was definitely really busy because you couldn't go to a restaurant, you couldn't eat indoors, you couldn't out, out eat outdoors. Where were you going to go get your cocktails or your wine? So we saw it all. People were buying in bulk because they thought mm-hmm. we would close. Ah, right. They're stocking up. Panic, yeah. It's going to be prohibition all over again. <laughs> that, that's that's kind of what it felt like. Oh, the prohibition era is happening again. Um and then it went back to kind of normal. You know, as as the vaccines came out, as people could get boosted, things were more normal. But it was 
probably the most interesting time to start because I wasn't able to learn much of the ordering process or how mm. he dad decided what he wanted to get because it was more too many like just deal with customers and get them out the door and then just continue on like that's what it felt like for the first year it was like, year and a half you just do with whatever was right in front yeah, of your face yeah that was yeah. it there was no we never were at the store at the same time either uh-huh. that never happened i think i was working in the evenings he would be in the morning for a few hours because the customer traffic is obviously more in the evenings Mm -hmm. so I was like I don't want you to work I will work so there was never a crossing of pads where we actually were able to sit down and discuss hey this is what I think we should order or this is what I'm thinking what are you thinking Mm -hmm. that didn't happen until I think almost this year well end of last year almost I would say so it was interesting to start at that point but I think it was good because I got to see a lot of the customers that came in so they recognized who I was and I wasn't just some you know random person Mm -hmm. working there so I think mm. that part was a good way for me to get introduced into the business. And not only then do you have to try, I mean, you have to figure out what to buy, but I guess you get to know what people, I mean, that that's all reflected in what people are buying. Right? Yeah. I was kind of thrown into that too, because the first two to three weeks when I first started, I was like, I call every five minutes, like, dad, where's, where's this wine? Dad, oh. where's this wine? Because I didn't, <laughs> like, I don't know where anything <laughs> was in the store. <laughs> And every, like, 10 minutes I'm calling and I'm like, Dad, do we have this? Like, do we have that? And (laughs) and so, I mean, of course, three, four weeks later, I hadn't known where what was. But the first couple of weeks, I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing here. (laughs) Like, kind of just got thrown in. (laughs) And that's like learning a foreign language, right? You just move and you're like, well, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Does your sister have any interest? No. I was the one who had the interest from the beginning. She wanted to go into a different field altogether. I was always interested in the business more I think so she did she did work at the store for some time but then I think she decided it wasn't what she wanted to do and for me it's something I always have wanted to do so great place for a summer job right in yeah. high school or whatever <laughs> that's nice and do you have other employees yeah we we have one person that strictly is for the stocking ah. so all the heavy lifting and all the work oh and our storage is actually on the second floor with the conveyor belt Oh, wow. So it sometimes takes a lot of effort, physical effort. So we have one dedicated person for that. But my wife does help, too. Yeah. Well, yeah, and then you might like to actually leave the store or have a vacation. Or exactly. Not, <laughs> not talk about the liquor business. Yes. <laughs> I mean, more for them. I'm still fine, but I want them to, you know, they've been working hard for 30 years now. It's time for them to go out, enjoy your life. I might need some parenting advice from you. You've raised a very, <laughs> very nice young woman here. I'm so, very proud of her, aw, yes. That's yeah. really sweet. Yeah. It goes both ways, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm equally, I'm actually more proud of him, I think, so. <laughs> that's really nice to see. Do you live nearby each other? Too? Oh, wait, I live at home. Okay, yeah. so three <laughs> generations in your house and two generations in your business. Yep. Yes. Wow. What's the secret? <laughs> Just love the family. Wine. <laughs> I, I think it is, for me, just be close to your parents. They have the best advice to give, and you might not like it in the beginning, but they always know what to say because they've gone through it. What mm. you're going through now, they've already gone through it three times over. So I, I don't know. I'm really open with my parents. I think that is because they gave me that. Hmm. liberty to be able to talk about whatever I want to talk about Hmm. so I've never felt like I can't talk to them about anything I don't know what their secret is I hope my kids are listening (laughs) (laughs) okay I wouldn't be a parent if I didn't ask this next question do you see a lot of young people with fake IDs coming through the store now and then they try and and the most important part is that catch them so that the word does can, doesn't get around that you can get away with it. So we have extremely, extremely strict. And wherever we have an iota of a doubt, our response is, I'm, I'm calling the cop. If he approves you, then I can make you the sale. So uh-huh. you have to wait till the officer comes. Oh, you have to stand and here and wait. Yes. So oh. 99% of the time, oh. yeah. if they have the fake ID, <laughs> they're gone. Oh, I, they're gone. They're I gone. usually just say I'm not comfortable selling it to you. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> and then... They throw a fit, and I'm like, "Yeah, my business, my choice. You can go elsewhere." So, I like that. And my business, my choice. Yeah. I'm making yeah. a note. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting out my pen. Yes. <laughs> and also, we don't take out of state. That has made it a lot easier. Like a lot easier. We just don't accept an out of state ID because hmm. there's too many 
risk factors. You don't know if it's fake. You can't tell. California, you can still have an idea of what a fake ID would look like. I think it's just interesting how sophisticated the fake IDs have become in California, sure. too. And, and I guess you really do have businesses who get known for taking them. Jolly King is not like yeah. that. I mean, we, as a part of community moral, morality, from every point of view, we can be as strict as possible. And also there are ways and means to catch them. I mean, you know, I mean, instances could be if it's their sibling's ID, mm. they may not remember the birth date correctly. Huh. Yeah. You could catch them with the height. I have done uh, <laughs> sign on a piece of paper. I'm going to match it with the ID. So, I mean, we have take, we have done so much over the years that generally they stray away from Oh, no, now you're a handwriting <laughs> specialist, too. <laughs> and my favorite, my favorite yeah. is... Uh, there was this girl came in once, and I asked her her date of birth, and she got it wrong the first time. And she <laughs> let me try again. I'm like, this is not a game. I was like, you can <laughs> go now. <laughs> I'm like, if you don't That's know when you one. were born, I <laughs> don't think that that you should Wait, be here. Wait, is this multiple choice? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, let me. I was like, this is, I was like, just, I was like, don't come back. You know, yeah. like this mm. is not, <laughs> this is not it. <laughs> mm. Not today. <laughs> I'm sure that there are many parents anyway in in the community that appreciate that very much. Definitely, yeah. So you've been doing business in Marin County for almost 30 years. How how have you found Marin County um, as a place to do business? I think it's a, it's a great place to, to do business in which I am and others. Mm-hmm. I mean, in general, uh, it's, it's probably one of the wealthiest county in the country. So... Uh, people are quite educated uh, from a money point of view, crime point of view, from all other all aspects. I think Marin is a great place to do business. Mm. People um, are also about eighty five percent white. Correct. <laughs> so that was one part I I, I I was not sure if I want to touch because some form of racism <clears throat> mm-hmm. definitely uh, exists. I had incidents where, I mean, I was told that, oh, leave this country, it's not yours. Hmm. Uh, mm. You know, and, and things like do do happen, but I will still not trade Marin County for any other city because that that portion is so little. Hmm. But, but I found that there are a lot of nice and educated people who would accept people of color, brown, you know. So um, I, I do not have any regrets why I came here. Mm. I'm, I'm very happy I'm a part of Marin County. I'm sorry that you've experienced some of those things and that uh, I think Marin County's lucky that you see it that way, that you see the good. Nidhi, you, you, you nodded your head when your dad was talking. Yeah. Have you had different experiences? Oh, I, no, 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 I've had, it's funny because I'm first generation and I've had people come in and say the same thing to me. I'm like, but I was born here, so where, mm. where would you like me to go? You know, yeah. like, I'm a US born, yeah, I'm a US citizen too. Yeah, you know, and it and but like my dad said, there are very many nice people who come in. We have a really, really nice clientele. I think they all know my dad well. They know me well, uh, so we're lucky in the way we're located. And most people are not, but like he's there's a very small per- percentage of people, and that's anywhere in retail that you yeah. deal with people who aren't nice. Uh, I agree with you. In retail, I think sometimes you you run into that maybe more than in other places, but. Having your business be open for 30 years, and it sounds like uh, it could be 30 more. Yeah. yeah, hoping so. So where, yeah, what, 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 what are your plans? Oh, my plans. Oh, um, well, I have a year left of school. I'm finishing my bachelor's very, very late in the game. Um, once I'm hey, done. Hey, the road is, doesn't have to be straight, yeah. you know, yeah. no judgment. So Congratulations. Once, thank you. Uh, I'm actually getting a bachelor's in leadership and management, so that will help. But this man is already you know, done it all. So I I would like to take it over in about a year, hopefully two years is the goal, and learn as much as I can from him in those two years because there's a lot of things I still don't know. That, that I think it's, it, that's the thing with the business, you learn something new every day. And, and mm-hmm. I think dad probably learned something new every day too. <laughs> even, now. even now. So I think <laughs> my plans is to take it over. I would like to expand if that is a possibility. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. It is something we've talked about, but we're not, 100% positive it's ever going to happen. As in a second location? Would be nice, but mm-hmm. again, need staffing to do those things. But the goal for now is just to take it over and to 
keep it the way it is and to run it like that and hmm. maybe hopefully do better. What a legacy. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, yeah. well, it's a gift that you, you're able to uh, share with your children, but then also that Needy wants to carry it on must feel like a gift to you. Absolutely. Well, it's such a pleasure to meet you and to have you. you here. I do believe you're our first Mill Valley business. Oh, wow. Oh, great. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> not, not without attempts, but um, we're delighted that you were able to come in and represent that southern portion of, of Marin. Our pleasure. Thank you for inviting us. Jolly King Liquors is on Miller Avenue in Mill Valley. Or call them at 415-389-8559. Speaking of calling, you can call us. Give us your feedback. Have a story idea? Refer a business you'd like to hear interviewed. We want to hear from you. Email us at weareonemarinpodcast at gmail.com or use your voice and call us at 415-847-2539. The Marin Community Foundation generously sponsors this podcast. Our theme music is performed by a student at Enriching Lives Through Music, Elm is in San Rafael's Canal neighborhood. Finally, a reminder to support diverse local businesses and shop Marin. <laughs>